But I remember a song that came to me during that time. Would you be a victor over every foe, conquer every trial in this old world below, overcome temptation that each day you meet, just keep in touch with Jesus, he will keep you sweet. Keep in touch with Jesus. Though your path be dim, let no cloud nor shadow sever you from him. Joy or sorrow greet you, friend or foe you meet. Just keep in touch with Jesus. He will keep you sweet. Now, that's not the one I want you to learn. I want you to learn... Uh, there's something mighty sweet. We'll sing it together, all of us now. There's something mighty sweet about the Lord. There's something mighty sweet about the Lord. It really doesn't matter what the people say, what the people say. There's something mighty sweet. And there's something mighty sweet about the Lord. There's something mighty sweet about the Lord. It really doesn't matter who what the people say. There's something mighty sweet. Now I'm ready for you. Girls, be quiet. Sing. There's something mighty sweet about the Lord. There's something mighty sweet about the Lord. It really doesn't matter what the people say. There's something mighty sweet. Once more, let's whisper there's Something to a lady that wanted to take them out to the zoo, and they went. And when they came back, they had learned a little song in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 17, and I call it our anthem. Uh, we're kind of untrained, and we haven't had the opportunity that you've had, but uh, the Lord has given us a song, and we've got to sing it. And so that's the reason we sing. Singing is a great part of our 300 girls. We have 150 in the choir. And you'll notice there's something, there's pathos in their singing. There's assurance. God has given them great conviction after he saved them. We teach them not only how to be saved, but we teach them to how to find the will of God. So, how about singing First uh, Timothy 1, 17, and then uh, 1, 17, right, and then we'll preach. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Now unto the King eternal, now unto the King
Turn your Bible, please, to Exodus chapter 3. We'll visit the land of bondage. God called a man by the name of Moses, who his mother said was a proper child. And she hid him by faith for a number of months because she wasn't afraid of the king's commandment. In the closing days of this grace area, or era, we're going to face opposition from and misunderstanding from the state. You've already faced it in Bob Jones. You're going to continue to get worse. We're going to face opposition from religion. And we're going to face, of course, opposition from a wicked world. I said to... Uh, The dear brother that led me over here, only God could build Bob Jones. It's too big for any man to build. Even though I appreciate the leadership and the way God's used them. But there were millions of Israelites in Egyptian bondage because they went off into idolatry. And anybody goes into idolatry, they go into slavery and bondage. Young people, may I remind you that one of the things we face today, and we're having a real revival of witchcraft. Our girls come in uh, hooked on witchcraft. And Satan worshipers come in with uh, the words, I love Satan. Last week, when they were going through the awful time of flashbacks and, and, and delirious uh, and, and, and it looked like epileptic seizures, you know what they were saying? Help me, Satan! Help me, Satan! Satan, help me! See? Well, he's the one who got them into it. Anything can happen to you if you get away from the Word of God. There's only one book that's got all the answers. It's the Word of God. We've seen thousands and thousands of people. We have a boy teaching in the uh, Rebecca Academy on dope for 14 years. I worked with him for a long time. Finally, the Lord saved him, and he graduated with honors from Tennessee Temple Bible School, and he's teaching. I cannot imagine that dope head sitting there in the class and me trusting him with 300 girls all about him. And yet, he's a real Christian gentleman. Home back together. Danny Kent will be graduating on dope for 12 years, five times in Lexington Hospital to get him cured, and nothing ever helped him except Jesus Christ. We have one message to deliver. We have one book to preach. And that's the Word of God. Moses, 40 years in Egypt's land. 40 years in the seminary of loneliness. And then he walks up in the third chapter as recorded in the book of Exodus to the burning bush. And he said, I better turn aside and see this sight. The bush is burning, but it won't burn up. And God said, you better pull off your sandals. And that's one of the revivals we need in this country, the revival of real reverence for God. Irreverence grins like a monster in the face of God today. Like, a, Let me tell you something. When we do not respect God, we do not respect anybody else that needs respect. Nearly every child that comes to our home, every girl said, I hate my mother. I hate my daddy. And they go so far as to say, I hate God. I hate your Jesus. I hate that Bible. I've already gone through all of that. And yet, just hammering down with the Word of God, finally they surrender, get saved, and they're made new creatures in Christ Jesus. I'm to take a boy now that shot his dad Four times in the head. Best friend he ever had. And he says that. He was a college boy. His daddy drove him to the campus. When the daddy came back to sit in the car, the boy pulled his pistol out. Shot his dad four times in the head. Told the judge, said, Daddy just wouldn't die, so I got me a car too and beat him to the ground. 
He still didn't die. And the daddy's alive today. And the daddy said, and he loves that boy to pieces. He said, Brother Olaf, please take him. Oh, listen, he might have shot one of my eardrums out, but I can still hear out of one ear. And I love him. That's sort of like a father's love, isn't it? And the attorney wrote me and told me about the boy and said, Now, do you want him? You know what's wrong with the boy? When they went to his room, they found witchcraft and sorcery books knee high. And the boy said, I read so much of that stuff, my mind snapped on me. And I shot and tried to kill my best friend. Got a boy in the other, a few good many months ago, just killed his daddy in Arkansas, and the judge said, Brother Olaf, if you'll take him, he doesn't need to go to penitentiary. Dad's a very mean man. And said, uh, would